the mining pick. The miner's pickaxe was the standard tool for all miners, and for many, his pick became like an iron extension of his arm. Blow after blow, the miner's pick would chip away at the rocks and uncover any gold that might be attached to them. Tools like this were in constant demand, and the entrepreneurial pioneers that supplied them became our nation's first millionaires. Some of the most successful business people, such as Levi Strauss and Samuel Brannan, didn't mine for gold themselves, but instead sold supplies to miners. The Iron Minecart The minecart, or trolley, was used for hauling ore up and out of the mines. In the years which hand mucking was done, mucking sheets were used in conjunction with the blast. They were 4 by 8 sheets of steel boilerplate. The blasted rock would land on these plates, making it easier to hand shovel the broken rock into minecarts and haul it out. The mine shaft. Once the new invention of wire rope became available, large stationary engines were placed on the surface at the opening of the mine shaft. The wire rope from the steam or coal powered hoisting engines were used to raise and lower mine carts filled with ore and ore workers in and out of the mine shaft. For grades of a few percent, trains of 25 cars, each carrying roughly half a ton, were typical in the 1880s. The detonator box. The detonator box, also known as a blasting machine, was an electrical device used to blast underground pathways. Often, miners were responsible for their own blasting. The importance of accurate blasting can't be overstated, and it was often this ability that determined the qualities and value of a miner. The most talented miners could direct a blast by their arrangement of explosives so that it would break only the amount of rock which was intended while at the same time not damage the wood framing. The best miners were experts at blasting. Dynamite In the late 1800s, dynamite was developed to be more reliable than gunpowder. Sticks of dynamite were designed to be placed in the holes drilled by a miner. The placement and arrangement of these holes was critical for a successful blast. Miners could set blasts in sequence using safety fuses which burnt at a constant rate. When cut to different lengths, Miners could set the timing of the blast. The Carbide Lamp Early methods for illuminating mine shafts proved to be very dangerous. The oil wick cap lamps, for example, created a thick smoke which irritated miners' eyes and lungs and left them covered in soot. Carbide lamps became a popular alternative in 1894. These lamps provided a brighter flame and a higher quality of light. Although these lamps have many of strengths, they do have their weaknesses. The runtime was only about four hours, so they needed to be refilled mid-shift. The burning tip would often become clogged, and large wind gusts would put out the flame. The Sticking Tommy This cast iron candle holder with a spike extending from it is known as a sticking tommy and could be stuck in the ground or a dirt wall. The word Tommy in the name is thought to be related to Tommyknockers, the mythical Welsh creatures similar to leprechauns who wore miners' outfits and were thought to create mischief among miners. A miner's sticking Tommy had a long horizontal spike that allowed the candle to sit out further from the wall, in addition to sometimes having hooks that would allow the candle to be suspended. Gold Bars the gold and silver that miners pulled out each day was sent to be processed or extracted from the rock, usually with a combination of chemicals and heat. Ultimately, the metal would be poured into a form of a bar of standard size called bullion. Bullion is gold, silver, or other precious metals made into a form of coins or bars. Bullion was typically used for trading in marketplaces due to its standardized value. The word bullion comes from Claude de Bouillon the French Minister of Finance under the reign of Louis XIII. 